Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from Avada. Today we are going to go on a deep dive into images with a guide to image formats and sizes for websites. Images are an absolutely vital part of any website and to successfully use images on your site there is a certain amount of knowledge about images you need to have. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. Ok, let's begin. Let's start with a quick look at what we are trying to achieve with images on a website. Essentially, images are meant to enhance the story we are telling with our website and to work with the copy to express our brand. As we can see here on this e-bike site, the hero image is a combination of two great lifestyle shots, showing people out having fun with their e-bikes. Technically speaking with images, we are trying to find a sweet spot between image quality and load time. So what are the various image formats we might use? Let's start with JPEGs. This is a raster based, lossy compressed format, which means they are pixel based and discard some of their data when compressed. JPEG is the most commonly used image format, and this format is the best one for photographs, as they support 16 million colours and generally compress well, giving them the lightest file size while retaining most of their quality. Then we have PNGs. This is a file type that supports transparency, and so this format is best for icons, flat coloured graphics and logos, or other images where you want a transparent background. They are typically larger than JPEGs, but can still be quite small. They are not so suitable for large photographs as their file size would be quite large. GIFs, or GIFs if you prefer, are a bit of a legacy format these days, primarily used because of its support for animation. It is a lossless compression format but it's limited to 256 colours, as opposed to the 16 million of a JPEG. If you are wanting a modern format that supports animation, consider the APNG or AVIF formats. SVG, which stands for Scalable Vector Graphics, is a vector format graphic. This lossless file format is great for logos and other graphics, scales perfectly, can be animated and supports transparency. That said, WordPress doesn't enable them to be uploaded by default and they are not as easy to create as other formats and are usually made only by graphic designers. Finally, the latest kit on the block is WebP. This is an image format developed by Google that provides both lossless and lossy compression for images on the web and also supports transparency. WebP images are typically at least 25% smaller than both JPEGs and PNG files. The browser support for this format is pretty complete now and WordPress does allow for WebP uploads, so you can convert your files to this format and upload them. This is a huge topic all on its own, but I think perhaps the best approach with WebP is to use a plugin or CDN which automatically serves WebP images sourced directly from your uploaded JPEGs and PNGs. This is an area that is undergoing rapid development. To sum up image formats, the current standard is still to use JPEGs for photos and PNG files for logos and other graphics. That said, WebP is catching up fast. Ok, so now let's quickly talk about aspect ratios. This is the relationship of the length of the image to its height, expressed as a ratio. 1 to 1 for example is a square image, as we can see in this example. Modern cameras shoot in a variety of aspect ratios, with 3 to 2 being the most common, or 2 to 3 if it's in portrait orientation. Phones on the other hand typically shoot images with a 4 to 3 aspect ratio. There are many established aspect ratios out there like 16 to 9, 5 to 7 and 1 to 1, and so if you're cropping your images when preparing them for your website, it's smart to keep to these established ratios. Photoshop is the industry standard image editor, but there are many programs and online tools for setting aspect ratios and preparing your images for the web. I'll link a few below the video. When it comes to images for a website there are three technical considerations then. The aforementioned aspect ratio, the dimensions of the image, and the size of the image file. An image that is 6000 pixels by 4000 pixels has the same 3 to 2 aspect ratio as an image that is 600 pixels by 400 pixels, but the former is much closer to what is going to come out of a camera and is way too big for a website. So once we have set the aspect ratio, we also need to consider resizing the image to its final dimensions and then address its file size. Let's start with resizing, and here the main consideration is how big a space you are going to add the image into. A website usually has a set content width, with some elements breaking out of that width and going full screen, 
like this hero background image. Then there are logos and favicons and images for mobile. So there's a lot of situations into which an image will be placed, and that determines how big it should be. Let's have a closer look at that. This website has a content width of 1200 pixels, so as I have two columns and I want to add an image into one, it makes sense that an image of around 600 pixels would be about the right size for this situation. It's just a matter of making a rough calculation as to the area it's going into. With images that stretch full screen, we have another consideration altogether, and one which is largely out of our control. There are many different screen sizes, with the most popular still being full HD monitors which display 1920 pixels in their width. There are however lots of 4K monitors, and they are getting bigger all the time. So when choosing the width of a full screen image, we have to pick the sweet spot between quality and size. If all our viewers were using 4K monitors, we might choose an image of 3840 pixels, the resolution of a 4K monitor. This would be crisp and sharp on a 4K monitor, but that image would also have a reasonably large file size, even with compression. On the other hand, an image that was only 1000 pixels width would be soft and a bit blurry in that situation. So a good compromise for full width images is around 2000 pixels, which can still come in at only a few hundred kilobytes with good compression. Logos are obviously going to be much smaller images, and here a rough guide is to start at about 300 pixels and see what you think. This one here, for example, is an SVG file at 355 pixels. Obviously, you can make these as big as you want to suit your design. Favicons have set widths to suit various devices, and with these you usually upload various sizes of the file to be used in these different situations. And then there are images for smaller screens, such as phones. Mobile browsing now comprises over 50% of all browsing, and so special consideration needs to be taken here. Phones also have a very different aspect ratio to computer screens, and so here, both aspect ratio and size might need to be reconsidered. This is where responsive design comes in, and here it's important you tweak your design for phones. Here for an example there's an image that only displays on small screens, and it has an aspect ratio much more suitable for phones. So once you've set your aspect ratio and resized your image to suit, before you upload it, it's good practice to first compress the file to ensure you have the smallest file size, while retaining as much quality as possible. There are many ways to do this, from using Photoshop, or an online compression tool, or adding a plugin to handle it for you. Here, for example, my hero image, that I resized to 2000 pixels on the longest length, was initially 589 kilobytes after exporting from Photoshop. But before I uploaded it, I ran it through the compressor website here, and as we can see, it dramatically reduced its file size to 184 kilobytes without reducing the quality visibly. I then downloaded the compressed version to use on the website. It's impossible to give firm numbers here, but as a general guide, it's great if you can get your smaller images below 100 kilobytes or below 200 to 250 kilobytes for full width images. The more detail the images have in them, the bigger they will be. The naming of your files is also worthy of consideration. Instead of some meaningless string of numbers, it makes sense to rename your files with a descriptive name before uploading, avoiding spaces in the file name and using hyphens instead. So in the end, what you want to upload to your website is an image that has the largest dimensions you will ever need with the smallest file size. This file then gets versioned with various other dimensions upon upload. You can dictate the different dimensions that WordPress uses in the media settings, found at Settings, Media. Avada as well versions the file for use in responsive design. Once an image is in the media library, you can also add alt text, titles, and even captions. These can be added using regular text and are used for different purposes. Titles are seen when mousing over an image on the front end, and captions can be used in galleries and on image rollovers, whereas alt text gives screen readers something to read aloud to users with visual impairments, help search engine bots understand image contents, and appear on the screen if the image fails to load. The alt text technically should be a description of the picture, but it is often used for SEO purposes. Once you have your image uploaded and tagged, it's time to add it into your content. In this case, I want to add an image to my second one half column. For page load speed, it's good to select the correct size for the space you're adding it into, which here again would be the 600 pixel version. But even if you don't, 
Avada will automatically set the correct size for the device the visitor is on. One final consideration is for retina screens. Another thing you can do is to upload an image that is exactly twice the size of what it's going to display as. So for a space where you are going to upload a 600 pixel image, you could upload a 1200 pixel image instead. As it's contained in a half width column, it's not going to get any bigger. But on a retina screen, it's going to display even more crisp and sharp than the original sized image. Here as well on the image format page, I uploaded the top image at 1600 pixels, but set an image max width of 800 pixels to get a good crisp image. Images that don't have much detail such as this one can compress considerably and sometimes even too much, reducing quality. With a website, it's important to source and maintain quality in your images. Poorly exposed or composed images will lower the quality of your content, as will poorly edited images, and so it's smart to use professionally captured images whenever possible. But if you're not a photographer or can't afford a professional one, you can also source many suitable royalty-free images from websites like Pexels, Pixabay, and Unsplash. Website imaging is an area that is undergoing rapid transformation and there are now services and plugins available that will adaptively resize your images on the fly, serving optimized and automatically resized images for the specific situation and screen size. Now that's an exciting development. Images are absolutely essential for a good website. They should enhance your brand and be as small as possible for fast page load times, while retaining as much quality as possible as well. To achieve this, you need some basic technical skills, and hopefully this video has helped you develop these to the needed level. Ok this concludes our guide to image formats and size for websites. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos, and if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.